<laughs> Sorry, just getting used to this. Welcome, welcome everyone. Nice to see you all here. Um, see members of the public here. Um, so just before we start, I'll go through a few housekeeping rules. We haven't got a far alarm practice plan. So if it goes off, if you could just make your exit through the two doors there and then straight ahead, there's a door there and gather in the car park. Um, toilets are through this door here on your left. If you want some water, it's through that door there on your right. Um, it's just remember you're live on the cam today. So, um, uh, you, you know, that, that's, that's how it is. Um, if you don't like it, I'm afraid that we're doing it. Um, uh, and also just remind members, as I didn't, use your microphones. Because obviously people out there, if we, we can hear you, but they can't. Um, right, so when each application comes up, we'll, we will have, the case officer will present the application. Then we will have uh, the objector, the supporter, uh, the parish council uh, rep, and the local ward member. Um, and whenever they've spoken, members of the committee may be able to, uh, will be able to ask some questions for clarification, etc. When that's all done, then we go into debate, and then the decision uh, will be taken. Um, just to say that obviously. It is a public meeting, and it's good to see you all here, but could, if you could refrain from not shouting out or getting involved in it, that's just between the members themselves and the officers, or indeed the speakers. Um, right, so without further ado, we shall move... Oh, wait there, I'm just going to ask, ask us all to introduce up here in the top table so you know roughly who we are. Um, Ms Young, if I start with you. Thank you. I am Janice Young, Democratic Services Officer and Clerk for this committee. Um, and I'm Julian Brazil, and I'm Chairman of the Development Management Committee. I'm Richard Foss, and I'm Hi. Vice Chair. Oh. Yeah. I'm Richard Foss, and I'm Vice Chair of this committee. Good morning, everyone. I'm David Fairbairn. I'm Head of Legal Services Monitoring Officer and the Legal Advisor to the committee this morning. Uh, morning, my name is Jacqueline Houselander. I'm the senior specialist in the planning department and I'm the lead planning person for this meeting today. <laughs> Cheryl Soundsbury, senior specialist in development management. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, and now we'll move on to the agenda. So, agenda item one of the minutes. Are you um, happy for me to sign the minutes as the correct record of the meeting last month? So moved, Jeremy. Yeah, all, all in favour of that? Lovely, thank you. <laughs> Uh, agenda item two, urgent business. I'm not aware of any urgent business. Item three, division of the agenda. I don't think there's going to be any exempt information disclosed. Um, item four, declaration of interests. Members, any declaration? Yeah. Yeah, but all Council that's in the AOMB, as I'm a representative for Southamptonshire Council on the AOMB. Right, thank you. Any other members? Yeah, sure. Well, I, just, I, I do know the, I do only uh, socially know. I do know the applicants socially, but, you know, it's only a... Which um, application, please? The first one. Thank you. <coughs> Members, any other <coughs> declarations of interest? No. Thank you. Um, item five, public participation. There is a list of speakers. Hopefully you've seen that. So I will call the speakers at and when. Um, Item six, planning applications. So we'll move on to the planning applications. And the first one is Ashhern Lodge um, Street. Um, street uh, 0647 21 stroke full. Um, and I'll pass over to Miss Stansbury, who's standing in for, for the normal plan, Mr. Henry, who can't be here. Miss Stansbury. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Um, so members will hopefully remember um, this application. You did, visited the site uh, sometime last year. Um, it was withdrawn from the committee because we hadn't advertised. It was affecting the setting of the listed building. Um, and there were some concerns about how the trees on site would be dealt with and if they could be retained. So this is the application site there. Again, it's this area of land here we're looking at. Um, so just some quick updates. Um, the case officer's refusal reason um, notes MPPF paragraph 1110. It also needs to include paragraph 111 
um, just put on the screen there for members' information, just sort of the key points of those. Um, we've got the highways officer here who can answer questions on the visibility, but I've just put a bit more information on the screen there, um, which demonstrates how the visibility is inadequate. Um, just a couple of quick notes. The landscape officer actually requested a hardened land, hard and soft landscaping condition if it was approved. We've since got views from the heritage officer. Um, they're happy with the application. They note uh, the removal of cars from the principal driveway down through to the listed building is a significant aesthetic improvement as set out in the heritage report. Um, and they've requested if it is approved that appropriate materials will be secured by condition. Trees, they have um, carried out some tree surveys, submitted the report. The tree officer is happy with those, feels it's been addressed. Again, would request a condition for works to be in accordance with that. And then the final note, the end of the officer's um, report mentions there's a conflict with SNP1 of the street neighbourhood plan. Um, that was connected to the tree, so now the tree issue is resolved. There's no longer um, considered a conflict with that policy. So just moving on to the photos, obviously that's the lodge building. This is the entrance um, into the driveway. So just a few more images moving around, moving down in towards the driveway. The site is on the left, of the side of that tree. So that's slightly further away. It, it kind of shows that you won't really see much of the site. Okay, and this is the site is is this area of field here. So this is one of the boundaries that will be strengthened up. Um, so photos that the applicant submitted with the application, I think it illustrates sort of where they currently park, so on the grass verges at the moment. Moving on to the drawings. So the properties that this application will serve um, are the lodge here itself, and the applicant also owns these two cottages. So it's, it's to serve parking for three dwellings. That's the existing site plan. That's a proposed site plan. So this is the boundary that I just referred to, said will be strengthened up. It's also going to be um, hedge planting around here. So that's just a, a sketch image of how it could look. Um, just to sum up the key issues, it's considered there's no impact on the heritage or the trees. Um, and the only um, outstanding issue which is reflected in the refusal reason is the impact on highway safety. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Stansbury. Any questions? <laughs> no. Um, in which case we will move. I, I've got a feeling, um, Mr. Jackson, that members may wish to ask you a few questions at some point. I do. Yeah, we, d we will. So after we've... Um, um, after we've heard that just before the, in fact, before before Councillor Foss comes in as local ward member, I'll, we'll, we'll go to you if that's okay. Thank you. Okay, so otherwise we'll move to the speakers as they are. There's no objector, so supporter is Miss Sutherland, please. Can meet speaking? No, you're not. Oh, no, no, so, sorry, it's been, I've got to, my yeah, list has been, my yeah, Miss Newman has been crossed off, so it's, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Louise. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. My fault entirely. I am sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but I see that you've no, crossed. No, it's my fault. Yeah. Yes, completely. Sorry. Make sure your mic switched on. Did you want to take a seat? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, Mr. Newman. What? What? You've you, you've got three minutes from when you start, and then when you finish, members may wish to ask you any questions. But okay. over to you. Okay. Good morning. Oh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we want to create a small car parking area in the corner of a field for good of the residents at the top of the drive um, because we want to get the cars off the drive and verges of the drive and the road to a safer place. Um, there's no room for parking attached cottages as it's a very limited site. Um, the houses already use the entrance and have done so for a long time and it will not increase the use. The road... The, um, the road outside the entrance is actually 20 miles per hour. And mi 20 miles per hour. Um, the new car park would be safer for getting uh, quite a lot of children who live up there, and it will be safer for them getting in and out of the cars rather than right on the edge of the drive. 
um, and it moves the coals into a designated area and frees that up. Um, the driveway entrance is historic um, and listed with the curtilage. Um, the cars in the car park would be better for the landscape. Move the cars off the driveway and the moment you look over to start point and you just see cars, that will all be clear. Um, the car park area will be um, uh, screened with the hedges and we will not, we do not intend to damage the trees in any way that are already there. We, I'm keen to retain them. Um, um, the car park will be of a permeable surface and will be screened to fit into the area so that the cars do not, um, are not unsightly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, members, any questions? I have. Councillor Foss. Yeah. Um, there will be the same amount of cars going in and out of that entrance after you've done the car park as there is now? Yes, that's right. the intention. Um, and if it, I know this is a, a, a question, but if there was room for them to park at the cottages, they would be still accessing onto the same road as this car park would? Yes, and we did consider that, but it, it was going to be very, very unsafe. Yeah, yeah because of the state. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Councillor Gill. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I meant to say that if you do come up to the three minutes, Miss Young will whisper something, and she's just saying you haven't got. <laughs> She's just saying you haven't got much longer. <laughs> OK. Yeah, all right. OK. Over to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kate Gill and represent Street Parish Council. I have known Street all my life. I came to live in Street on the return after the evacuation. We Street Parish Council support the application because essentially nothing will change except the removal of a patch of grass, which will be replaced by a rolled by rolled stone with a concrete sluice to a soak away should they be run off in heavy rain. Trees and other vegetation will remain the same plus extra planting and a gate in the area, gate to the area. The highways officer requires historic proof of the use of the current drive down to Ashen House by the occupants of Ashen Lodge adjacent to the drive entrance and the residents of the two Ashen cottages on the opposite side of the A379. I now give that proof, as I have always known that the vehicles owned and driven by these residents have always parked their vehicles on the grass verge on the drive down to the main Ashhern house, and they will continue to do so, unless, of course, they have a car park. The ability to safely turn their vehicles around in the car park, allowing them to exit safely, will be an added bonus. It is also worth noting that the southwest coastal footpath is on the A379 to the centre of the village. From the entrance of the sewerage works, past the post office and shop, the chapel and the King's Arms pub and the pub car park. The path then passes the entrance in question to Ashen House and then goes back onto the field immediately past this entrance. This means that pedestrians and their pets are constantly using this section of road. In recent years, it is also worth noting that the speed limit has been lowered from 30 to 20 miles an hour. In all the years I have been living in or associated with street, I have not been aware of any accident involving vehicles or pedestrians at this entrance. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Councillor Gill. Any, any questions, members? No? Thank you. Thank you. Right, I'm just going to go now to Mr Jackson, who's the highways officer. Um, and basically the reason why this is being refused is on highways ground. So, um, Mr Jackson, I don't know if you just just give a brief introduction as to, as to why you've come to that conclusion. And then I'm sure I know Councillor Foss wants to ask a few questions. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, um, the evidence that has just been presented is the first time that evidence has been presented to the Highway Authority by somebody that is local in the area that knows what's been happening. Um, so I 
agree with everything the lady has just said? Okay. Um, right. <laughs> well, um, I, th I, th you know, I think from that that you're withdrawing your objection to extent because it's not going to increase the number of cars. Um, Councillor Foster, do you still want to ask any questions, or you you feel that? That's don't feel you have to. No, I don't. I no, no, okay. just feel that right. my, my thunder has been somewhat stolen. Right, OK. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's, well, un it's unusual for Officer Jackson and I to come to the same conclusion in such places. OK, well, it's, yeah. it's, it, it, it's, it's good to know that he's got an open mind. Yes. That's it. Um, anyway, as local ward member, just just make well, your case, but I feel that... I, um, I, I did want to... Uh, the wind I, is I, running with you. I, um, I was going to... Uh, Ask Richard some, some fairly terse questions because I know that area very well. Uh, we've all seen it. Um, the amount of cars going in and out is not going to increase. It's in a 20 mile an hour speed limit. Several of you have been in and out of there on the day we went on a site visit. And, and personally, I couldn't see the problem. And I'm highly delighted that uh, Mr. Jackson has, has now come to the same conclusion. And um, thank you very much. Right, thank you. That's the local ward member. I don't know if there's any questions you want to ask Councillor Foss. We'll move into the debate if we need to have one. Um, yeah, um, Councillor Panel. Well, we went and inspected the site. I think certainly me and I think I gathered uh, from comments being made, we, we generally felt that um, what's been proposed was an improvement, a, a great improvement on the existing arrangements. Um, it will fit into the landscape better. It, it won't um, add any additional traffic coming in and out of that entrance, so it, it won't increase the, uh, the hazard there. Um, and in view of the benefits or, uh, and the fact there's no objection from any of our other officers, I would like to propose uh, approval. Thank you. Councillor, Councillor Brown. I'd like to second approval, Chair. Any other members wish to say anything? No? Um, yeah, Councillor Reeve. Well, it is a very sensible application, isn't it? So I think we're all in full agreement because it, it makes sense to do what's been proposed. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, the highways officer is a very technical reason, but having heard the evidence, the highways officer is now satisfied that actually it won't lead to an increase in cars coming out of that junction. Uh, and as such... Um, you know, that reason for refusal has, has diminished somewhat. Um, I think that's fair to say. I mean, contradict me if, 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 if I've got that wrong, Mr Jackson. No. In which case, we'll move straight to the vote. Sorry, Mr Fairbairn. Uh, before you do, Chairman, can I just confirm that the proposal is, in fact, to approve subject to conditions granted by the uh, Head of Development Management? Second, are you happy with that, Councillor Brown? Yep. Yeah. OK, thank you. Right, so that's... Um, do we all know what we're voting on for approval subject, subject to a uh, delegated uh, decision to the Head of Planning on, on, on the conditions for... What were those? Chair, we do have some, con uh, some conditions prepared if you want to just... We could just do the highlights or...? Yes, please, yeah. So a couple of them are on the screen there. So um, landscaping scheme... Materials, so that will be the the stone that's going to be used. Um, I would suggest it includes the gate as well to make sure that's appropriate. Um, works in accordance with the tree survey, ecology survey, um, implementation of drainage, and I would suggest there's probably one for the actual use of it, so it just serves those three properties. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you happy with that? Happy with that proposed a second or good, in which case we will thank thank you, Mr. Stansbury, in which case we'll move to the vote. Can I have a show of hands for all those in favour of this application? That's unanimous, Chair. Thank you very much. So that application is approved. Welcome, Councillor Rowe. Lovely to see you. Just in time, perfect timing for the next application. Uh, <laughs> That's good. Um, right, so we will move on to application 6B in the, on the papers. That's 
4713 stroke 21, and that's a householder um, application. Um, just, just give Miss Head a few moments to get. Thanks, Richard. Yeah. Sure. Ready to go? Yes. Well, we've, thank, thank you, Miss Head. Right, if I pass over to you, so that's uh, agenda item 6B, um, 4713 stroke 21. Over to you, Miss Head. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a householder planning application in Hope Cove. Um, it's a detached property, as you can see from the site location plan. This just shows you the outline of the site and where it is in relation to the rest of the village um, and the aerial view. I don't know if you can see my mouth. So it's this property here. And the application is for um, removal of an existing shed and replacement with an annex extension to the rear of the property, which is this here, and also for a carport extension uh, to the existing garage. These are the uh, proposed plans. Um, this is the annex extension to the rear. Um, it's for the applicant's uh, mother, so it would be condition, recommended a condition to be used ancillary to the main dwelling. And these are just some photos. So this is just showing the existing uh, shed to be removed. Uh, this is the application site, which is currently undergoing some construction um, for an approval, which has already been granted um, to go into the loft. Um, and this is the neighboring property here. This is just looking back the other way. Um, and this is looking, as you can see, the, uh, up towards the road. Uh, the site is very sloped um, down from, uh, from the road, uh, so it won't be visible um, at all. And then that's the existing garage, which has been um, converted. And the, yeah, the key issues are yeah, design landscape, uh, the neighbour amenity, which has been uh, addressed by reducing the height of the um, proposal, uh, the parish Council have objected due to overdevelopment, um, but as it's within the um, built form of the village, um, TTV 26 doesn't apply. Um, so we consider due to the scale um, and nature of the plot, it's not considered an overdevelopment, so it's recommended for conditional approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's a councillor panel. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, it states the accommodation will provide an extra bedroom and living dining area is there not a bathroom in that extension or is there a bathroom already existing nearby 
Um, there's a bathroom, but it falls actually within the floor plan of the main house. Um, so there's a bedroom and a living slash dining area. Um, the, the agent has confirmed that the applicant will use the kitchen facilities of the main dwelling. Sorry, uh, could you explain again, it's a, again about the bathroom? The yep, sorry. So there is a new bathroom proposed, but it actually oh. falls within the footprint of the main dwelling here. Oh, see, it will be built into what's existing. Yes, but the, yes. I, yes, I thought it was odd providing this without a bathroom, but no. that, that, there will be one, but it's in the existing building. Correct, yeah. Any other questions, members? Um, Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Apologies, I can't be there today. I'd much prefer to be. Um, just a question to the planning officer um there were issues raised by the parish council who were concerned about flooding and local um concerns about flooding do you believe that this the the elements and the drainage plan has or is not going to uh, increase local impact or downstream impact um, yes, they've provided a, um, a solution into the existing watercourse on the site and I'm uh, considered acceptable with regards to um, yeah, any impacts on the neighbouring properties and, and downstream. Uh, the site's not within a flood zone uh, or a critical drainage area either. So yeah, with that regard, uh, what's been provided is considered acceptable. Thank you. Chairman, just one more um, question. Uh, with regard to the conditions that you've put on um, in it, is the ancillary use, would it prevent the types of use such as Airbnb? That type yes. of, that type of use. right, okay. Yes, yeah, so it will specifically say to prevent the, um, sorry, I've got, I haven't got my condition on me, but yeah, it will have a specific word in to say to prevent um, letting and, and renting and other uses okay. of that sort. Okay. The other, the other point, um, given the number of applications and the scale of development on the site, was there no consideration of removal of uh, permitted development rights as a condition? Yeah, that's a good question. It hasn't been put forward, um, but it could be a recommendation if you if you would yeah wanted to suggest that. I think I think, I think, I think Mr. Chairman, Mr. if it Chairman. should be considered. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Long. I mean, obviously, if, if the committee is minded to approve, it may be that the proposer and seconder would like to see um, removal of permitted development rights um, as far, part of that proposal. But we'll, we'll wait and see. Sorry, Miss Houseland. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just wanted to confirm that um, because the application is for the annex, the, the removal of the permitted development rights would be on the annex as opposed to the, the whole dwelling. Just wanted to make that point clear. Thank you. Okay, so could it not could it not be extended to the whole dwelling? I don't think it could, no, uh, because the application that we are considering is purely for the annex. So yeah. Okay, well that's clear enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so members have got that. Um, right. Thank you. Any more questions for for Miss Head before we move on to yeah, this? I, I, yeah, Councillor Foss. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we see this ancillary quite a lot. Uh, what, what is allowed to be in an ancillary and not allowed to be in an ancillary building? Re -cook, cooking, are you allowed to have cooking facilities? Uh, yes, yes some, some annexes do have cooking facilities. Um, the, the policy requires that there should be a functional, um, uh, functional, yeah, Dependence. dependence if you like on on the host dwelling so in this case for example because there's no kitchen in the annex they would, they would need to use the kitchen in the main dwelling um, and similarly the bathroom I suspect could be used by both parties because of the way it's um, already within the existing dwelling what about Airbnb the condition that um, Rachel would propose be putting, proposed to put on the consent would limit it to ancillary accommodation for the house so it would need to be occupied by people associated with the people who live in the main house um, if if members were concerned about airbnb it may be that we could um, add a, a further condition about 
not not having a holiday lets uh, or something along those lines, then then that would be something that we could add if members were concerned. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank thank you, Miss Head. Any more questions? No. In which case, we will move on to the speakers. We haven't got any speakers, but we have got our local ward members. Um, online. Um, Councillor Pierce, Councillor Long, I don't know which one wants to go first. Councillor Pierce? Yep, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Can yeah, you hear can me? Speak. Yes, we can indeed. If, if you want to, oh, over yeah, to you. Thanks. Well, as this is really only on the agenda because it's, um, it's owned by somebody who works for the council, I haven't got a lot to say about it. Except that members will have seen that the Atkins report is quoted by the parish council. Now, I've re-looked at the Atkins report, and as far as I can see, it only refers to the valley in Outer Hope and not to this valley in Inner Hope. Um, and there are flooding problems in Outer Hope. There are flooding problems lower down in this part of Inner Hope, but not here. I think this building is definitely situated high enough above the stream not to be affected. And um, the officer has quite clearly said that the um, the built footprint of the proposed um, annex is less than the present hard standing of the patio and therefore there shouldn't be a problem. Um, I do think it's probably worth conditioning that there should be no further hard standing in the garden to replace the patio area that's being lost. I think that would be um, a good idea. Um, and if we can beef up the holiday letting situation so that there's another condition saying that it must not ever be used as a holiday let then I think that would be useful as well but otherwise basically I have no real um, objection to this I, I think um, architecturally it's become a bit of a mishmash but then that could be said of quite a lot of properties in this area anyway and they are not particularly visible from the road because they are all below the road so from that point of view um, it's of less importance than if they were highly visible. So really, I've got no objection to this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Pearce. Any questions for Councillor Pearce? No, in which case we move to Councillor Long, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, very similar to uh, Councillor Pearce. Obviously, the Parish Council have raised um, issues and concerns. Um, the officer has gone, I think, a large way to address those but i think that there are elements as as councillor pierce has raised about no further sort of hard standing or that sort of within the garden um would be useful i think the question about holiday lets is important for this so i think if that can the condition can be improved on that um i think that yes it is higher up in the flood area i think there are sort of still concerns locally about flooding, but um, they appear to have been addressed. And I think it's something that the Parish Council will have to uh, monitor with all developments in the area and perhaps the Environment Agency's um, uh, classification and zoning in the area if they are concerned. I'm pleased to see the reduction of the ridge height and the roof pitch um, that has been achieved in this. I think it does sort of take it down and certainly away from the neighbours. Um, but I I know that there is concern and Councillor Pierce has said about the mishmash nature of the uh, development on the site with the various planning applications coming forward. I do believe it would be it would have been quite good to have had uh, PD rights removed from the whole building, but it might still be worth having uh, worth having the PD rights, but it's development rights removed from this uh, annex and extension just in case there are changes um, made to it that could impact the neighbours and the area. Um, but overall, uh, I think, you know, this parish council, I'm sure, will still have some concerns about this and will be monitoring it. But um, I, I think it is something that I would at this stage not have any um, objections to. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you Councillor Long. Any questions for Councillor Long? No, in which case we will move into the debate. Over to you, members. 
Sorry, M Mr. Fairburn, you were to... Yeah, Chairman, I was just going to pick up on the point about um, conditions outside of planning, outside of the application site, because I suspect that's where some of the debate may, may head. Um, certainly, there is the power to um, impose conditions on um, land that is in the control of the applicant. So uh, I understand that the blue line, which is, show, which is shown on the planning application, is likely to include all of the land around the um, development site. So um, you're able to control um, or impose conditions subject to the usual tests of necessity, planning purpose, etc. So okay, that that's useful. Could, that that does mean you could remove permitted development rights. Yeah, so and we deal could. With the yeah, yeah. So we could. So we could remove permitted development rights from the whole building, not just the application, not just the new um, uh, ancillary accommodation, oh, and sorry. and also um, the hard standing, which both local members seem to think were Im were important. I mean, I know Councillor Pierce said never ever. Obviously, that's not quite the case. It's a condition, and, and, an app and a future application could seek to change, vary that condition. So um, we, we can't save never ever, but we can put a condition in, and that would have to come back to us if they wish to change it, or, or whoever's here. Right. Uh, members, over to you. Councillor Rowe, and then I'll come to Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Chairman. I hope this microphone working. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, well, as Councillor Pierce has said, the application is only here because it's uh, owned by a member of staff. Um, I, too, did write in my notes when I was going through about Airbnbs, and it shouldn't be used for an Airbnb or letting out of any sort, and only for a member of the family, I believe, who wishes to be moved into there. Um, if we were to put conditions on there that it should not be let out for any other use, holiday or whatever, my question is, who's going to police it? Because we've got Airbnbs popping up all over the place um, in people putting chalets in gardens, etc., etc., and they get away with it simply because it's not, not being enforced as perhaps it should be. People don't report it and all the rest of it. So um, whilst I would welcome if we could put that condition on it, um, and possibly the a removal of further development rights. Um, it's like you've already said, Chair, that um, we cannot enforce it forever. And we say, that, you know, they're not allowed to have any more hard standing, etc. turn the lawn into hard standing. But if they do, who's going to know about it? The parish council say they're going to police it, but parish councils change every other year uh, practically so while we have a member of parish council this year who might want to police it in two years time they probably won't be on the parish council and they won't be bothered about it so i would move approval chairman thank you thank you councillor Rowe. just with your moving approval were there the conditions that we've yes. talked about here so yes. so if i sorry to put words <laughs> into your mouth so remove uh permitted development rights within the whole site um, and also with particular reference to any hard standing in the garden and also to have a specific usage. condition about usage, which yes. which means that it has to be, um, that it's not let out or Airbnb'd. Yes. Um, I, I think the points that you raise about that, there are more operational matters, yeah. not really for us. I'm we sure can, they are, but there's... That I know what you say, escapes. and then I know that yes. it causes a lot of frustration to people, <laughs> yeah. but, but I don't think it's for no, us it's to... It's not a planning matter. No, no. And, and, and also, I mean, I'm sure the local members will keep an eye on it, as well as the parish council. <laughs> right. Um, so thank you for that. So that's those two extra conditions... Um, about PD rights for the whole site and also a specific policy about usage, um, which you've got here. So those, those. Thank you, Councillor Rowe. And you're and well, I think that I think within the permitted development rights, just to reference hard standing, as that was a particular um, concern of the local ward members. But that was it. That's contained within that one condition about PD rights. Yeah, Councillor Taylor. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I would second the proposal to um, approve. Um, could I have some clarification on our standing? Because um, if they took away the soil and put permeable stones or whatever the case is, is that hard standing? I, I, I don't want to get into too detailed debate, debate about that, but I, I, I think that we, that we want to have... I, th I think what they're concerned about is if, what they put decking or, or or extend the decking or 
stones. I mean, if it's if it's a, you know, is it hard standing? Isn't it hard standing? I mean, you know, I I just think that you know the more control we have over it, the better. I mean, I see that Councillor Long wants to come in. Um, Councillor Long, I think Chairman, thank you. I, I think it is um, the fact of say putting down um, extending patios and elements like that, which obviously when you look at the site plan, as you can see, the position of it, if you start to extend out and put a large area of, of hard standing patio out there, it will have quite a quite an impact and potential impact on drainage and the aspect of it. So I think however it can be um, picked up, hard standing patio, um, terrace, uh, we've got to try and cover it so that again we're not um, putting sort of built form as such and hard form across um, a large chunk of the site. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, I, I hope that clears it. I, you know, it's it's not going to be exact there, but it it gives us a certain amount of control as the plan, planning authority that if we feel that it's overgone, we have got that within the conditions that we can we can then try and enforce. Um, or they would have to. Um, put in another planning application and any any more for any more um it's been proposed um by councillor Rowe um for approval with those two extra conditions have i got a seconder for that councillor taylor's happy to second that are there any more members who wish to speak on this particular application no in which case we'll go to the vote so this so we're voting for approval as per the officer recommendation with two extra conditions about permitted development rights and a specific one about usage of it are we all okay with that so could I have a show of hands all those in favor of the application please show that's unanimous chair thank you very much that application is approved right um we're just gonna have a, a short break now partly because Mr. Bladen, who has tested positive for COVID, so he can't be here, but he's going to make his presentation via the, um, the Teams. So we're just going to check that all the technology is working. Um, so we just take a sort of five minute break and then we'll come back to those two. Also, what I would say is because I, I'm the local ward member for the second one of those, um, I'm going to ask. Councillor Foss as Vice Chairman to chair the next two applications just to make it simpler rather than we're moving around again. So I'll I'll come out and join join the riffraff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
We're now going to go and I think Couch of Brazil. The only thing Couch of Brazil didn't tell you to do, and I remembered only about five months ago, was just put your mobile phones on silent. <laughs> what, did we get a reception now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 You do, you do now. Right. now. If you, you're on Wi Fi, you were. So. Yeah. yeah. So, um, anyway, so we're now um, members. We're going to move on to application 150821 full. Um, this is at Brixton Ward, Wembury, Brixton. And I believe technology has made it possible for Mr. Bladen to present online. Are you there? Hello, yes, yes. I'm here. Right, if you'd like, if you'd like to proceed and present the case, please. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, okay, so uh, this is an application for a single detached dwelling uh, on the edge of Brixton. Um, the uh, The main reason that the application has been brought before the committee today is because of concerns regarding a potential conflict with the neighbourhood plan. Uh, the application site is um, just outside the uh, settlement boundary as defined in the neighbourhood plan. This image on the right, I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer. Yes, we can. Oh, you can. Great. So this image on the right, the pink outline shows the settlement boundary defined in the neighbourhood plan for Brixton. And our site is just here where my mouse cursor is. So in terms of the development plan, the, the sorry, the joint local plan, uh, Brixton is not a named settlement and um, therefore it comes down to a question of an analysis of the sustainability of the site, i.e. how well related is it to the urban fabric of Brixton. Um, the parish council and some of the local residents have made the case that because the site is outside the development boundary defined in the, in the neighbourhood plan, um, it therefore is in conflict with the neighbourhood plan and, and should be refused on principle. Um, however, there doesn't appear to be a policy in the neighbourhood plan that um, prevents uh, any development from coming forward outside of the settlement boundary. And the joint local plan um, states that in locations such as this, it then falls to uh, an assessment of the sustainability. So um, officers consider that the location is um, well related to the services and facilities offered in Brixton and um, it's as you can see from the map here it's sort of surrounded by existing residential development so it's considered uh, by officers to be more of an infill plot um, um, which which would be considered a sustainable location for for a new residential um, development the uh, Design of the dwelling itself is single story um, and considered to have a low visual impact on the surrounding area. It's as you can see from the from the images here, it's a contemporary design and um, is considered that it's 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 a well screened site, as you can see from these images taken from the road adjacent to the site. There are numerous mature trees and hedges um, encircling the perimeter of the site such that it's not considered that it will have a significant visual impact on the surrounding area. Um, there was also an issue raised in respect of highways and the creation of um, an additional access point onto the highway. Um, but this site was formerly in the grounds of this dwelling up here, Northlands, and the access to the site is the former driveway to Northlands, which the access to this property now comes down here, out of this road here. So the, the Devon County Highways haven't raised any objection to it. 
and it's considered that it's just the reopening of a, an existing former access. And it's considered that there is sufficient visibility at the access and there's sufficient provision within the site for parking and turning of the vehicles. I believe that's all of it. Thank you for that. Um, members, questions? Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, just, just on the, I mean, obviously there is a uh, the development boundary or the settlement boundary, um, and I appreciate what Mr. Bladen is saying in respect that there isn't a specific policy that says you shouldn't develop outside of it. But can I ask, I mean, in, in that case, does it sort of bring, I mean, what is the relevance of a settlement boundary then or a development boundary if it doesn't carry some weight in respect of what you could do inside or outside of it? Thank you. Well, it does carry weight in that um, any proposals outside the boundary um, will need to be considered as quote unquote development in the countryside and therefore will need to be subjected to a you know, a, a, an analysis of the sustainability of the site with relation to how well related it is to the uh, services and facilities offered by a, a settlement. And in this case, as the site is so is abutting the, the boundary of the village, it's it's considered to be you know well enough related to the settlement. I, I understand your concerns that this may open the floodgates, as it were, but as I'm sure you will recall, you know, we have to consider every application on its individual merits and the decision, any decision that's made on this application, although it will, it will be of relevance to and will carry some weight in consideration of, of other proposals, similar proposals, it, 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 it won't determine the outcome of other applications because, you know, we have to they may be they may be a, a further out of the town and less well related to the to the settlement. Thank you. Any further questions? Just, yeah, Councillor Reeve. Can we go back to the photograph of the the plot here, the real photograph of it? This one. Um, this one. No, the one where the trees are and the other houses are just above it. There's like four houses just above the site. Is there? So, so. Yeah. So how old are those houses or were they built before the neighbourhood plan was set? They don't look that old, do they? They were, they were this, this development was approved in 2017. The neighbourhood the plan, plan, I believe, was made, made in 2019. Thank you. Let's go to Robert. So, um, Mr. Bladen, can you put your arrow on where the site is, please? Yes, sorry. Yes, sorry. Can so you see that? In there. In this group of trees. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any further questions? No? Right. Then we will move on to a uh, new objector. The supporter, Mr. David Bothmer. Bothmer. I hope I pronounced that correct, sir. Right, okay. Would you like to stand or sit? I'll stand, thank you very okay. much. You will have three minutes and you will get a whisper in a minute, 30 seconds before that you're getting towards your time, okay? okay thank right. You. Good, good morning, all. Uh, on the 7th of October, excuse me. On the 7th of October 2020, the transport specialist Trace Design produced a technical statement regarding the reopening of the existing access, and this was sent to Richard Jackson on the 13th 
of October, Richard Jackson replied, and I quote, Dear Martin, I did manage to get to site at the end of last week to look at the old access point. I tend to agree that for a single dwelling there would be no issue with the access being reopened for vehicle traffic. There are several instances where this kind of scenario is present along the A379 with no apparent issue and also in this case there is adequate access and forward visibility. Pre-application advice. On the 25th of February 2021, pre-app advice was received. The principle of the development is supported subject to the scheme complying with the planning policies of which you heard earlier. Thereafter that, planning application was submitted. On the 18th of June, a meeting on site with Brixton Parish Council and the planning supervisor architect. Parish councillors asked a number of questions and all these were responded to. On the 24th of June, the Parish Council object to the planning application, despite all their concerns being addressed and responded to at the meeting. On the 2nd of July, an email was sent to the planning officer, setting out a response to all the points raised by the Parish Council in their objection. On the 25th of November, the planning officer emails to explain that there were some crossed wires with the legal team had not received the agreement and the ward members were not consulted in line with the procedures. He confirms that he has sent the agreement to the legal department and has consulted the ward members. He confirms he has recommended the application for approval 25th of November 21. On the 18th of March 2022 the Environmental Agency sent me an issue to approve the design of the drainage system and sewer system within the development. <coughs> it's an Environmental Agency permit. I would like to read out my final uh, points, please. I would emphasise that it is a single storey flat roof bungalow, very discreet. It is a natural stone blending in with the wall on the outside with a green wall system. There are solar panels being installed onto the flat roof, which won't be seen. The proposed, that the proposed landscaping has been designed in consultation with an ecologist and it will result in a biodiversity net gain. Finally, that the planning officer considers that the proposals comply with the development plan and is recommended for approval. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for a very factual Thank you for your time, yeah. Any questions? Any questions, members? <coughs> I'd be surprised if it was after that presentation, to be honest. I congratulate you on that because it was very factual. Thank you. Okay, so we'll now move on to Councillor Liz Hitch Hitchens, who will represent the Parish Council. I don't think I need to tell you the procedure. We've been here before. Yes, Very three much. minutes. <clears throat> Thank you. Good morning. On the government website, it states that neighbourhood planning gives communities direct power to develop a shared vision for their neighbourhood and shape the development and growth of their local area. It provides a set of tools empowering local people to plan for types of development to meet their community needs. Brixton Parish Council objects to this application as the location of the site is outside the Brixton Village Settlement Boundary as defined and marked in red in the Brixton Parish Neighbourhood Plan 2014-2034. The planning policies contained in the plan are relevant and must be applied. The plan met the basic requirements for the examiner in June 2019. At the referendum on the 15th of October 2019, 95% of the people who voted supported the plan. The plan and its policies were formally adopted and made at South Hams District Council on the 28th of November 2019. The whole thrust of the neighbourhood plan is to ensure that the integrity of Brixton Village and the surrounding countryside can withstand for the foreseeable future the pressures of any single or multiple housing development. At the time the plan was finalised in 2019, over 129 new buildings had been built in the previous six years in and around Brixton Village, in addition to the start of the 5,500 new homes for Sherford. The neighbourhood plan provided the opportunity to limit 
the continuing erosion of the identity of the village and the special rural landscape of this community, which is not only on the edge of the large conurbation of Plymouth, but within a mile of the development of the new town of Shefford. Whilst there is no specific statement that there would not be any development outside the settlement boundary in Brixton neighbourhood plan, what people voted for were clear policies to protect the countryside outside the red line of the settlement boundary from further development until the need for housing was identified through a housing needs survey as part of the review of the neighbourhood plan in 2023. Other policies in the Brixton neighbourhood plan which are relevant are policies DEV 1 and 2 linked to the JLP policy TTV 26 development in the countryside and the environment and landscape policy EMV 4 green corridors identified to protect against further expansion east of Plymouth. In considering this application today, members of DMC must recognise that the Brixton Neighbourhood Plan has clear policies to protect the landscape outside the red line of the village settlement boundary. This application breaches those policies as the site is not included in the Neighbourhood Plan for Development and there is no identified housing need. It undermines the Neighbourhood Plan's policies to protect the identity of the village and puts at risk for the future of the special landscape <coughs> that defines the parish, council, the parish character. Consenting to it will set a dangerous precedent, not only for the integrity of the Brixton Neighbourhood Plan, but for all, all other neighbourhood plans in South Hams. If DMC approves this application, a condition should be placed on the consent for the dwelling only to be used as a principal or main residence, and not as a holiday let or second home. Questions? Uh, questions? Question to Brazil. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Just just on that last point, you said that um, that it should be have some primary residency or local residency clauses on it. Is that part of your neighbourhood plan? Is that within your neighbourhood plan? Uh, As a policy? No. 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 Okay. No. Thank you. Thank you. Coach the row. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'd like to ask why the boundary was drawn so tight because there are more houses uh, further along towards Plymouth on the A379. Why did you choose that point, which excludes the houses further along? And the main reason for the settlement boundary is, as I said in uh, my statement, is to protect the integrity of the village of Brixton. Thank you. Further questions? No? Thank you very much. Right, um, in that case, we'll now move on to the ward member, Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and I, I, I thank members for coming out to visit uh, the site on Monday. The reason that both myself and uh, my fellow ward member, Councillor Chown, have, have brought this to committee is, is, is fairly plain and simple, and that is because of the Brixton Neighbourhood Plan. And no problem with design or anything like that. It is it is the principle here, and essentially, I don't wish to go over the the points already made by uh, the chair of Brixton Parish Council. I think she made them very well, um, but I, I I believe that these plans should be given the chance. Essentially, um, they've been voted on, they've been approved, and 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 therefore, that's all I really have to say on this. On the grounds that I I, I believe that I, I understand this is in potential conflict with the neighbourhood plan, and and for that reason. That's the reason I've brought it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. For that. I think we all realise that, but this is uh, um, something, yeah. Councillor Panel. Yes, yeah, just to ask uh, Councillor Brown, I mean, are you suggesting that there should be no development in the countryside or anywhere else in the parish that falls outside the neighbourhood plan? Um, I am suggesting that the main principles of the neighbourhood plan that have been put together should be adhered to as closely as possible. If that answers it. Well, this falls outside the neighbourhood plan. Yes. So, uh, well, as I've said, I believe this falls outside of the development bound of the development settlement, as 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 stated in the neighbourhood plan, and that's why I think. But that, that, that is why I brought this to committee. That, that, very simple. Any further questions? Can you roll? Well, I'm not quite sure, Chairman, because it does say um, it's recommended 
for approval, but then we have got reasons why it's brought to committee. Then it's got conditions and reasons for refusal and not in full, so I'm not quite sure which, where, why, when, what that's all about. And I liken this a bit to the AONB and the AONB boundaries because um, those of us who know quite a lot about the AONB know that uh, a lot of societies, etc., don't like um, development within the AONB and it's sacrosanct and we shouldn't be developing within the AONB. But it doesn't mean to say that we can't, it's not set in stone that we can't do it because we have seen quite a lot of developments within the AONB. And this is outside the development boundary, which has been put around there. So I wouldn't have thought that it was, if it's outside that it's relevant. Um, that's all I want to say really at this point. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, catch your panel. Well, we had a good look at the site on Monday. Um, a week. Are we, you said a question or are we going to go into... Oh, sorry, I thought yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll we've got... I think we've got questions. Wrote, we'll I think we've got questions. We'll go into the debate, started. OK? Right, just to make that clear. Sorry. OK, thank you. Um, we had a good look on Monday. It is a bit of, uh, of wasteland. Uh, there's some <laughs> very um, <coughs> useful trees that screen the site and they won't be touched, I understand. Um, there are no trees on the... Um, footprint of where the bungalow is going to go I think it will make use of what is other, will otherwise be a very scruffy piece of land and the fact that it's outside the neighbourhood plan boundary um, gives us I feel the discretion to decide whether we think it's appropriate and I think with those other houses there with the sustainability of the main road and bus services etc uh, I think it will be um, a useful asset to have another home. We have a housing crisis. We need more homes. I would propose approval in accordance with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Pano. Um, there were one or two. Con are there any conditions with your? Well, the conditions are set out. I think in the um, in the document. There was one other that was mentioned by. Council of Brazil just now about whether it could be made. That was uh, that was put forward by the yes by the parish council. Yeah, I'd like to hear what the officer feels about that, please. Yeah. Okay. So I have a proposal for approval. Um, I'll have a se seconder, and then we'll go to two conditions. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Sorry, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, that's, that's so fine. Um, if this was in the open countryside, I would be dead against it obviously, but to me, that looks like infill. Now, I can't see that that's going to make a lot of difference to the neighbourhood plan because we're within an area and that's just a waste bit of land. It's not a green space. It's, it's a waste bit of land that um, they're going to put a very discreet building on it and, and that, to me, it's an infill. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, Councillor Brown. Uh, I would like to move refusal, which I appreciate is against officer recommendation. Thank you for that. Councillor Rowe. Chairman, I will second Councillor Panel's move for approval. <coughs> oh, okay, thank you for that. Have I got a seconder for refusal? Um, with Councillor Brazil. Sorry, Sorry, Chairman, but you have already got yeah. a proposal and a second on the table. Yeah. You only debate one at a time. OK, we'll debate that one. That's fine. I was, sort of, I was just wondering. OK. Uh, so we go into the debate on the country, Brazil. Um, yes, look, I, I'm, I'm going to vote in favour of this application. Um, I do so with a slightly heavy heart because I appreciate that neighbourhood plans take a long time and a lot of effort for those involved. And I congratulate um, Brixton... Brixton for coming forward with their neighbourhood plan. But I do think in some cases you want to be careful what you wish for. Uh, and my fear here is that if this was refused and it went to an appeal, an inspector may drive a coach and horses through your development boundary. Because I think, as Mr. Baden made quite clear in his presentation, that, the, that we take each site on its own merits. 
And I have to say this particular site, having been there, it's on the main road, it's surrounded by other buildings. I, I, I think in that sense, it is, it does sort of fit the bill as an, ex, as an exceptional site in respect of the development boundary in the open countryside, because it's, you know, it's factually, it's the open countryside, but obviously it's not. If you look at the, you can see from the, from, from the map here. So in that case, I will support it. I do think that the opportunity has arisen there for the neighborhood plan group to review their neighborhood plan and maybe bolster the conditions if anything is built outside of the development boundary. And I would love it if this had a local condition on. My fear is, or a primary residency condition on it, my fear is because it's not contained in the neighborhood plan, there is nothing, there is no policy within our local plan that we can hang it on. Uh, and therefore I'm struggling. I do appreciate that there is something that says that they would, you know, they would do a housing need, and that for exceptional circumstances, if they're going to build outside the neighbourhood plan, it, the, the development boundary, then you can get some. Uh, you can put conditions on it to support a, you know, a, a, a housing need that's been that's been found, and and if there's any way we can do that, I'd very much support it. But I would defer to um, planning officer and legal opinion on that. Um, but um, as it stands at the moment, I will vote in favour of this application as per the officer recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Brazil. Yes, I was going to defer to the officers for conditions um, that you feel that are applicable to this. There is quite a list there, isn't there, in the further down? Yeah. Um, do you want to add anything? To Just wanted to. to uh, refer to what Councillor Brazella said about the fact that unfortunately there's not a principal residency condition uh, policy that we can use to um, for this planning application because there's not a policy in the JLP or in the neighbourhood plan for such purposes. I know there are in some neighbourhood plans, but unfortunately not in this one. So um, we won't be able to put a principal residency condition uh, on the application. With regard to local connection. Um, I, I need to refer you to, uh, we had an appeal quite a long time ago, a, an appeal decision which reflected the fact that we probably shouldn't be putting local connection conditions on, um, just, um, um, and, uh, and often the reason for local connection conditions were because um, maybe the house was in the countryside um, and there needed to be a local connection to a certain parish and they were it was perhaps because it was contrary to um, the TTV 26, but it was being allowed and therefore there was a local, local connection applied to it. In this case, you know, it's, it's um, to all intents and purposes within the village, albeit outside the settlement boundary identified by the local plan. Uh, the, the neighbourhood plan, sorry. Thank you for that. Sorry, no, 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 I'm fully with you. I fully understand what you've said. Yeah, coach to Brazil. Yeah, can I, just, can I just come back? I mean, obviously, we have now declared a housing crisis. Does that have carry some weight in respect of, I mean, we talked about historical um, appeal decision, but at that stage, we probably weren't, I mean, well, we certainly hadn't a um, uh, pass, you know, Past the motion that we, you know, accept that we've got a housing crisis, and I wonder if that might be able to give more weight to the local connection, because, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think if we can put local connections on these infill houses, the better, because inevitably they do have an effect on the open market value, and that's, you know, good news as far as affordability is concerned, and and for local people. Thank you for that. Any comments? Um, Mr. Fairbrother. I think that's going to come down to me for comment. <laughs> yes. um, I, I think, it, unfortunately, if we're going to do that, then we do need to do it, include it in the development plan. So either through the neighbourhood plan or through the JLP review, um, because ultimately that is the framework within which you're working. But I understand the point, and no doubt that it will be a driver as part of the review process. Thank you for that. Any more comments, questions? I have a a proposer and a seconder for approval. Yeah. I, I was just going to add, yes, I um, approval subject to the conditions set out in the report, uh, and I do not wish to add the um, condition for a principal residence. Right, thank you for that clarity. Jim, in light of that clarity, there's also a reference to a unilateral undertaking being provided 
So it's subject to the unilateral undertaking and the conditions set out in the report, presumably council panel. Sorry, what was the unilateral? So a reference in the report. So there's a reference in the report for a unilateral undertaking for a contribution. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we're we all happy. Okay, so Reeve. It's just a really silly little thing, though, but I didn't go to the site meeting, but looking on the plan or the report, and you look on the plan, those four houses haven't been put on the plan, have they? So that so the, the house that's been proposed looks really isolated because those four houses... I was just wondering why those four houses... Well, they're not on this... And this is what we look at. Yeah. This is what we go through. Yeah. I just wonder why... That, that plan is out of date, yes. Because it would make a difference if you haven't been to the site because you don't see those houses there and it does look a lot more stuck out. Thank you for your comment. I'm sure it's been taken on board. Right. Um, are we are. are everybody happy about no questions, no comments? Right. So can I have a, we have a, a, pr a proposal and a seconder with the conditions that we've already laid out uh, for approval. Can I have a show of hands for all those in favour? All right. Any against? Thank you. Good. So that application has been approved. Thank you very much, everybody. Right, we will now move on to agenda item four. Um, pardon? Seven one, sorry. Is three four four five oblique twenty one full Sunnyside the Hay Barn South Allington. Okay, and Mr. Mr. Bladen, are you still there? Hello, yeah, I'm here, yeah. <laughs> okay, this next... Yeah, are you there? Yeah, shall I take it away? Or? Yes, please, if you'd like to present the, the case, please. Right, this, this next application is for a replacement dwelling at a site uh, a short distance north of South Allington. And the proposal is to replace an existing uh, single story detached dwelling with um, a, a new dwelling on a slightly larger scale, um, but still a single story dwelling. Um, and the the main reason that um, it, we're here discussing this application today is because there are concerns um, regarding the planning history of the site and the legitimacy of the of the, the dwelling that's there now. Um, here's the site plan and you can see that uh, if I get my mouse out again, um, it, this it outline is the outline existing is house and house. that you can see it that they want to put the replacement right. dwelling uh, essentially on the same footprint. Um, with the soak away drainage off over here. Um, Oh, sorry, no, that's the foul drainage and the soak away is down here. Um, it's in the AOMB uh, and um, so the visual impact is a significant consideration. Um, but that will obviously be taken in the context of the visual impact of the existing structure that is proposed to be replaced. And as regards the planning history of the site, uh, the existing building, which is the existing dwelling on the site benefits from the certificate of lawfulness um, which was uh, the reference number is at the top of your screen now and that certificate certified as lawful the use of the building which is um, outlined in red here as a dwelling it it certified the use of all the land in this red area um, as residential land and it certified the use of This one out, this one outbuilding here is ancillary um, to the dwelling. I believe it was being used as a hobby workshop, and the certificate also certified the use of this outbuilding here as ancillary accommodation to the dwelling. Uh, and um, members will no doubt recall that we saw these two and several other outbuildings on the site when we visited on Monday. Uh, here are the floor plan and elevations of the building. You can see it's a very modest, simple 
building. Um, and uh, at, the, at the time of the application, the materials proposed were not especially high quality um, that we would hope to see in an AOMB landscape. But um, uh, after some discussion with the agent, the uh, agent was happy to agree to a condition that the specific details of what materials would be used for the external finishes can be agreed you know, through a condition. So we can ensure that, you know, timber windows and real slates, for example, are used. Um, here's some photos of the existing building on the site, which is benefits from this certificate uh, establishing its lawful use as a dwelling. And this is the building that they propose to demolish and replace with the, with the you know, traditional looking bungalow. Uh, uh, the, uh, you can see here from the, in the photos that the, the site, there is a lot of mature um, trees and hedges, um, both surrounding the site perimeter and all throughout the site. This, the aerial photo here shows it perhaps better. Um, here's our dwelling, which is proposed to be replaced. And you've got lots of planting within the site and you've got lots of mature boundary hedgerows all around the site. So uh, in terms of the visual impact, much like the, the, the previous proposal, I don't consider that the proposed uh, replacement dwelling will have a um, will be visually prominent in the landscape. But um, having said that, you know, we should still insist upon high quality materials in this AOMB landscape. I think that's covered everything. Essentially, Essentially it's a proposal for the place of dwelling and offices and offices and We do have we a, do specific have a specific policy, policy that, that uh, deals uh, with deals replacement dwellings in the, in the local plan. And, and offices feel, feel that the proposal, the proposal meets the requirements, the requirements of the policy of replacement dwellings. dwellings. So, so therefore, therefore, without prejudice, without prejudice, without prejudice to site history, site history or, or any other any alleged unauthorised goings on on the site and the surrounding land, Thank you, Mr. Blake. Can I ask? I'm going to ask one very important question. Are you? Can you categorically say the certificate of lawfulness is for that building, considering there's a house being lived in down below, and many other buildings there? Ah, uh, yes. If I, if I just bring up the slide again, this um, site plan here is taken from the permission for the certificate of lawfulness referenced up here and it shows the land that is certified outlined in red and it shows the building outlined in red which is certified as a use as a dwelling and the two outbuildings that were referred to in that decision notice the building down here is understood to be a dwelling it's outside the development site it doesn't refer to it doesn't relate to the current application or to the certificate um, I am not personally um, particularly familiar with the uh, planning history at all of, of this site down here. Um, so I think that that, that that is an investigation for a separate sort of conversation. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. I just wanted, just wanted to be absolutely sure of that, so thank you. Yes, of course. Questions? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Taylor. Yeah. Um... Hi, oh, sorry. Um, now, can somebody tell me which building was actually turned down at appeal a couple of times, please? Was it this one or the lower one? I mean, I'm a bit confused about all this because there's a mishmash of buildings there on an agricultural field that uh, used to be arable, and I think it was harvested on several occasions by our vice chairman, and it suddenly turned into a mishmash of buildings, um, which appears to have got no plan in uh, at all, but uh, that is a different issue. But uh, I just want to know which was the ones that was actually turned down at appeal. Yeah, Mr. Fairberg, can you clarify that? I can that, say, Mr. Yeah, Councillor Taylor, perhaps that's something we can take outside of the, the, the committee because, as you just rightly said, it's not, not relevant in terms of um, this application. The application before you is the building that's uh, shown in the plans and in the certificate. So, um, 
what else is going on around the site doesn't is, is irrelevant for these purposes. Yeah, I understand that. But all I was saying was, was it this building that was turned down as appeal, or was it the lower building? It was the lower building. Okay. Right. Any more questions? Coach Brazil. Uh, yeah, just just on the um, you say it screened well. I mean, do we have any um, protection of those trees in the screening? In perpetuity, like a TPO, for example. But to my knowledge, to my knowledge Councilor, there's no TPOs on the site, um, and the certificate of lawfulness um, did not did not did not contain any conditions relating to the preservation of, of existing boundary treatments. And I don't think that it would be possible in any in any event to apply a condition like that to a certificate of lawfulness. Uh, I'm Just, not proposing I any conditions, I don't believe, in relation to boundary treatments with this application. application. But during your report, you've said that it's well hidden because of the boundary treatment. If you're then saying that they can take that out, then that's a rather... It's a, it's a, it's a non-statement because they can just take it out and then you would see it in the, in the landscape. Well, you could say the same about the previous application. But it remains open to, 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 to nominate or recommend any additional conditions in the event of a, a recommendation to approve. Right, let's clear this up. Um, we did go on site, and, and I know members didn't like seeing what some of the other things they saw. But we, as Mr. Fairburn has already said, we can only consider what's in front of us. Uh, as to conditions, perhaps, Mr. Fairburn, if you could just enlighten us what we are able to include in the trees or not able to do. Um, well, on the last application, you have got a, a tree protection uh, measures condition imposed. Um, and I guess that you'd be looking to do something similar in respect of these trees. Thank you. Okay, is that it? Right, we'll move on to um, Ms. Amanda Sutherland, the supporter for this application. You'll have heard already that you've got three minutes and that Janice will say 30 seconds, okay? Lovely. Thank you. Good morning, sir, and uh, members. Uh, I'm here in respect of this application. I appreciate that there are concerns being raised around the room and the officer, I hope, has reassured you in relation to the planning history matters. So the situation is that uh, the lower barn is what you're talking about, sir, in relation to the previous enforcement uh, action that was lost on appeal. Completely separate ownership, nothing to do with my client, nothing to do with her site. She owned it then, 15 years ago, but she hasn't owned it for many years and it's no longer anything to do with this. So we're back to the position that the officer set out, which is that this site, the subject of this application, this particular dwelling, is that old tumble-down building, if you like, <laughs> that you see on site. Now, one of the points that I think is really important to make clear is that this is the first time that an application has been made for a new dwelling on this site to replace the existing lawful structure. And as you know, because it's been developed via lawfulness certificates, there are no conditions attached to it, nor indeed, as the officer told you, could conditions be attached to it. This is your opportunity, members. You have a planning application in front of you now that gives you the opportunity to control by condition what is going to happen on this site for the future. Policy supports where there's an existing dwelling, it can be replaced subject to certain considerations. Now, the concerns that I've heard, I was aware of the fact that people were worried about the history. Hopefully you're reassured on that. I've also heard mention of how are we going to implement a landscaping scheme? How can we be certain? Those members that went out on site visit will have seen that there's quite substantial banking around the site. Um, going down the hill, it's a bit difficult for me to sort of point out, but um, you can see there's an entrance that comes down time that you've got the chance to, to deal with an application as opposed to lawfulness. Any conditions that are considered necessary, we're happy to agree to. Time. Thank you. Um, Thank you. The, uh, Thank you. Yeah, 
Officer Bladen, would you like to come back in? Yeah, if I could yeah, just I clarify, um, I've just pulled up my officer report to refresh my memory on the specific conditions that I've recommended. And I see that I have included a condition on there to require details of hard and soft landscaping scheme to be approved. So that's already covered. In Thank you. Any questions? Sorry, I should I should have let you sit down. No, any we got? No, right. We'll move on then to um, nobody from Paris Council. Uh, on to Council of Brazil Ward Member. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, as I'm sure members can imagine. Uh, and I'm sure it would be the same in their patch, this kind of application and the way that this has come about leaves the community at a loss, really, uh, in the sense that if this can happen here, why can't they do it where they are? They're all struggling to house their family members, etc. And whereas I appreciate that uh, people have their houses, but why, what, why should this be allowed? What, why should this be allowed? Um, uh, we, we've heard some of the history. The history was is that, the, the, is that they tried to live in that dwelling below, and that was rejected by planning applications, by appeals, uh, and then through really lack of monitoring, um, they managed to establish the certificate of lawfulness of a residential dwelling ab above it, which is the one that we look at. Um, it leaves a very, very nasty taste in the mouth, quite frankly. This is completely planning through the back door. Uh, and the idea that this can just go through on the nod is unacceptable to me. It's unacceptable to my local community. And I totally understand where they're coming from. Um, we see here, uh, and we see from the plan, um, uh, uh, from the certificate of lawfulness for uh, accommodation that's ancillary to the certificate of lawfulness. Um, uh, we can put, I know this, so it's within the site plan. All right, I'm assuming therefore we can then condition the ancillary accommodation as we did with the one before that it's not allowed for letting or Airbnbs or any of that malarkey. Um, as we saw, it's got a hot tub outside that's beyond um, what I don't, basically what I don't want to happen with this application is that it somehow ratifies everything that's there in, in case. There are, there are new structures on there that were not part of the certificate of lawfulness that are there now. That whole tr new track down to the bottom dwelling was never there before. You know, it's never had planning permission. This, 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 this brings the whole, to me, this brings the whole planning and things into disrepute because we have failed to do what we should be doing as a planning authority, and that is to protect the open countryside. Uh, and we've singularly failed to do that. I appreciate that as a replacement dwelling, um, the position that it is that from a planning point of view, we struggle to, um, struggle to find reasons for refusal. Um, because in the end, it's a, it's about the same size. It's not much higher. The materials have been changed, and they are now acceptable. But I have to say that I can, I, w I cannot, I cannot vote in favour of this application. Um, and this is from this, you know, maybe this is just unique to me as the local ward member. But I just, it, they, I find would find it incredibly hard to look other members of my community in the face when they say they would like to build a house in this field for their relatives or whatever. And I say, no, you can't. And they would reference this. So for my own peace of mind, I will not be voting for in, in favour of, of this application. Um, I can't tell you how angry it makes me feel um, that, that, that we've got to this stage on it. Um, it's everything that's wrong. And um, but anyway, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Brazil. Um, I think I'm going to ask a question or two. Can we go back to what would have been probably an ordinance survey map of the area you had with the bare field? I know you'll say this isn't, isn't relevant. You see that? You see the bit that's now red in there. That whole field there 
I harvested many times in the 80s, 90s, and in the 2000s grain. Now go back to what you got on that whole site now. And you'll understand the anger that Council Brazil feels, the anger that I feel, that that's been allowed to happen in an area of outstanding natural beauty. I know it's not what we've looked here to talk about, but it needs to be aired and it's been aired now. Now I'm going to pull you all back now and onto the actual site uh, because otherwise Mr Fairburn will be telling me off. Um, I feel the same as Council Brazil on there, but unfortunately I don't have that uh, situation. I have no option but to support that application. Uh, but I want to hear what the rest of you feel about it before we have a vote. Well, can I have a proposal for um, recommendation okay. for approval? Because so that's what we'll, we'll need if we're going to go any further. I need proposals or some discussion on this application. The bit that's in within that red thing, uh, within that red binder, no, anything else? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, Council Road. Council Road. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. I share both your and Councillor Brazil's sentiments entirely because it's happened to me in my parish in Stoke Gabriel and we have plots of land, odd fields which people, farmers or so-called farmers, you know the kind of people I mean, that sell off fields and they get bought by people who come in and then they set up a chalet there because they want somewhere to look after their stock, maybe. And then they decide, oh, well, we'll sleep overnight. So they do, and they gradually make it into a home. And if they don't apply for a certificate of lawfulness... Um, Councillor Rowe, right, I'm going to have to stop you. No, I'm going to go on in a minute. Can I please, because... But on, on, the, on the actual application, yes. Yes, yes. yes because... I'm going to have to be... I, I understand where you're coming from. I've expressed, I think, most people's views as well as the Council of Brazil, but we've got to go back on to the actual thing that's in front of us. Well, i got one more sentence to add, because we turned down one in my parish and refused it. They went to appeal and they got it. So, therefore, Chairman, I feel that if we don't approve this application that's before us today, is they've got a certificate of lawfulness, they will go to appeal and they will win and probably we will have to pay their costs. So I will move approval. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Rowe. Coach Rabbit. Anybody else got anything to say on the matter? Right. Conditions. Now we need to sort out those. There was um, considerable discussion on site about <coughs> umpteen and, and the officer who was there did take note of the buildings that are there for various uh, reasons. One's a potter shed, one was a wood shed, and um, we, we did have a list. Um, and that's within the cartilage. Do we have any control over what happens there, please? Chairman, there are existing buildings. Um, you're removing peat permitted development rights, so they're entitled to use the buildings as they're currently being used um, because they've got the certificate which says they're used for, for residential purposes. So, um, no. But you can control for future development through permitted development, taking away permitted development rights. Right, thank you. Uh, yeah, Councillor pa Panel. Can I ask what the, the situation is, as Councillor Brazil mentioned then, about the use of other ancillary accommodation on the site for Airbnb and letting out? Yeah, they, it, they would have. Able, um, if it was resulting in a material change in use, then that would require separate planning permission. Um, you are um, there's well, no there's, sorry, I just, there is a there is an ancillary building which I understand is already being used for letting out, which, as far as I'm aware, doesn't have planning permission. Uh, so, are we able to condition? Are we able to condition on approval of this that no other ancillary buildings are used for letting out? Um, I think I, I don't think you can. 
um, because why why is that necessary? You need to satisfy the tests for a valid planning condition. And, and what planning purpose is it serving? What why is it necessary? And why is it reasonable in all the circumstances? Um, if there is um, if that use um, ceases to be ancillary to re the residential use for which they've got a certificate, then that is a separate planning matter. That's a separate enforcement matter, uh, and we can take action separately to, from from that. But it's not a matter I don't think for today. Yeah, just on that matter, I mean, obviously, this is an incredibly isolated site, as we all found when we drove there. If you start using it for Airbnb, you're increasing the traffic. It's an unsustainable location. Uh, and as such, I think it is a planning matter that this should be restricted to, um, as we did, as, as we conditioned in that previous application, when we put the extension on that house in, in, in Hope Cove, that the ancillary included the fact that it was to be, you know, was not allowed to be let out separately for Airbnb. I mean, you know, that's, you know, I would say that that is a planning issue and there, there is, and there is a material reason uh, as to why it affects, uh, <coughs> you know, would be, a, you know, I don't think highways would be happy um, to have extra accommodation in this area. Chairman, may I? Yes. Um, that was because the last application was for an ancillary use, a future ancillary building. Um, we're talking about buildings that are already there, already have effectively through the certificate um, a permission for use as, as a red ancillary to, to any residential use. Um, should there be a um, in increased use of those buildings um, by way of um, Airbnb or holiday lets, um, then that is a for, that would require potentially planning permission if it resulted in a material change of use, and that would be subject to enforcement action. But I don't think it's an appropriate matter for today. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Right, I have a proposal and a seconder for approval for this application. Are we happy we've got all the conditions in place that we require? Yes, yeah. Or do you want to do it subject to afterwards, as we've done? Uh, how do I think the um, report has got the conditions necessary in order to um, put the application on the stand. Okay, thank you very much. So, can I have a show of hands for all those in favour of this of approval of this application, please? Four. Those against? One. Abstentions? Three abstentions. So that application is approved. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Oh, sorry, we've got, yeah, sorry, that's the end of the actual planning application this morning. We'll go and do the, uh, which we got first? The majors, first of all, please, can we, is there anything that needs to be said about them? Just going here for a so, Chair, <clears throat> the majors are, you know, they're just an update list. If, if there's any questions that uh, members have on the majors, I'm very happy to try to answer them. Anybody got anything they want to bring up on majors? Yes, Councillor Rowe. Are well, we still being recorded, Chairman? Yes. We right, are. fine. Yeah, um, we have this very long list which comes before us every month, and I can't see much changes now. Why does it go on and on going back for years and years? Why is it not being updated, brought forward? Why is nothing happening with these um, 106 agreements if they're not being signed? If not, why not? What's going on? So I think you recalled at the last meeting, uh, Councillor Hodgson mentioned about the first one on the, the list, mm. which was Brimhay, and, and suggested that um, 
you know, why are we, why is it still on the list? Um, it, it's for the applicant to withdraw the application if they're not going to proceed with the section 106. We can ask them to withdraw it. Um, uh, I don't know if that's happened <clears throat> in this case, but certainly um, if things aren't progressing, then there is a, an opportunity for us to ask them, but we can't force them to withdraw it. Um, uh, and certainly from the Brimhay one, I did feedback on the last meeting that you know we perhaps need to be thinking about that. But unfortunately, Pat, as you know, was off sick and so didn't progress. Um, there are some that, that do, do do drag on because of Section 106. One of those issues is because there's um, the, the, the workload for Section 106 is, is quite high um, as well. Um, but uh, if members want would would want us to. Uh, chase up some of these really long-standing ones, then uh, I'm sure we would be able to do that. Can I come I, back? I can answer the second two, the second and third one, because that's in my ward um, in Frogmore, and the problem there is there was a dispute over boundaries when the houses were built, not in quite the right place, and it's been an ongoing sore. The council presumes aware of it as well as I am. In fact, I think it started when he was board member for there, and. Um, the 106s have yet to be set. I don't know, have they still not been signed? Okay, fine. All right. Um, it, should, it should have been debated. Um, oh, Councillor Pierce. Um, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologise for all the rows of C's that I've put in the chat box. I've got something leaning on my um, keyboard and I didn't realise. Now, on this one, I suggest that it would be a good idea in future when um, a section 106 um, is included in an application, that that application should be brought back to committee in six months if the section 106 hasn't progressed, and that the committee should then decide what to do about the application, because I think there needs to be an obligation on both sides here to move the section 106 forward. Okay, I, so I think David, uh, th yes, Mr. Fairbairn has whispered some. Uh, he wishes to speak. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think um, um, Councillor Pierce is, is right. I think that there is a need for that mechanism. And I do think, I think from memory, that that was also something that was included in the development management improvement plan um, that would start to happen. Certainly, I think it's been agreed in another place that that's the sort of thing we would do. Um, and, and whether that's the precise detail is. is Councillor Pierce has set out, but I think there was some sort of mechanism that effectively there would be a resolution that if it hadn't been completed within a certain period of time, it would be brought back or, or to that effect. But certainly that is contemplated. Well, considering this has been going on since 2014, I think it would be a good idea to have something in, uh, it, that we can move things along a bit. Coach Brazil, sorry. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's a very practical solution. I, the, my one concern would be that we sort of manage to sort of shoot ourselves in the foot in the sense that in some cases it may be because of our um, lack of resources or capacity that we haven't got to this situation. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I mean, what would happen on that case? I mean, I, can, I get it that, that whether you come to an impasse between their interpretation of a 106 and our interpretation of a 106 and by all means bring that back to committee but I think if it's a, an occasion where we just quite frankly haven't done it because we haven't had time um, I'm not quite sure by bringing it back here what that would resolve Thank you Councillor okay, Pierce, sorry yeah, if, if I may come back on that, um, it's my understanding, and I could be wrong, and Mr Fairburn can cor correct me, that we are currently not handling all our Section 106s, and some of them are being um, put out to other planning solicitors to handle. I think it is up to the Council to ensure that they have an efficient mechanism for concluding these agreements within six months, provided that the other side are complying with the asks on their side as well. And I think that by having some sort of a time limit, it does actually um, put the boundaries out for both sides, not just our own, to make sure that um, 
the matters are concluded more efficiently than they're obviously being concluded at the moment. Thank you. Any other comments on the majors? Yes, Councillor. Oh, yeah. I've just gone and died of death. Councillor Taylor. I didn't, I didn't die there. I didn't die there. No, my screen's just died of yeah, death. I'd, just a comment. It's not always the plan officers that actually are the difficulty with these decisions because sometimes the agents are slow coming forward with um, revised plans or whatever the case might be. I mean, there's one on this screen now that's been going on since January 21. Um, and I'm getting phone calls about that, obviously, because he thinks he should be speaking. But it, it's down to them, really, to if they don't agree with the ap application, then they, they need to put forward immediately some decisions on what they would accept. And uh, so you can't blame the plan officers and the system very often. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, is that it on the majors? Do you want to now move on to planning appeals? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, Sorry, I've lost my screen. You carry on. I know we're doing appeals, so okay. we'll get there in a second. Right, carry on. The first one is the TPO um, appeal, which um, part of which has been agreed and the other part hasn't. So some of the some of the work to the trees will will be allowed to be taken down, but but others not. Um, the second one um, is at Moon Lane uh, Modbury, um, and it was dismissed. Um, Oh, I'm just going to find my notes. Um, the reason it was dismissed was because of the impact um, on the character of the area, the AOMB, and also on the conservation area. So that was quite near the church. Uh, so it was quite a positive um, result for us. Um, moving down, another TPO appeal, which again was uh, in this case dismissed. Um, the next one is a householder application 88721HHO that was again uh, dismissed um, and it was dismissed on the basis of um, uh, sorry, because, um, again uh, in relation to the conservation area it, didn't con it wasn't considered that the development um, pres uh, conserved and enhanced the conservation area and the um, the impact of the development on the traditional nature of the cottages. Um, next one is in Hill Lodge. Uh, the next one of, uh, with a decision is the 42720 FUL um, Shoot Park uh, Marlborough. It was a small development but it was in the countryside and the inspector considered that it had an impact on the AOMB undeveloped coast and uh, the character of the area. Then, I think there's one I've missed actually. I have just at the top of the page, um, uh, it goes over two pages, sorry. It's the, um, at Kingsbridge, um, it's six new dwellings, um, Dennings, Wallingford Road, Kingsbridge. The applicant actually went to appeal against non-determination um, and we submitted some evidence um, and indicated that um, the inspector decided that the three areas of consideration, one was drain, whether, whether there was adequate information submitted in relation to drainage. The other was whether or not it was an efficient use of the land, because there was some question over the density of development. Um, and the other one was with regard to, was there, was there sufficient infrastructure? Whilst it was dismissed, it was only dismissed on the basis of lack of drainage information. So the other two issues that we sent to the inspector were not he uh, he did not agree with or she, he or she did not agree with um have you got any questions members any members got any questions well, no? if i could just maybe make a comment i think we've had very good results um mm. in the decisions that have been made by members and officers and then uh, they've gone to appeal on our our um <coughs> what we have done has not been overturned so i think you know we should be Grateful or thankful for that. Congratulations to our officers. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Rook. If that is it, um, I will declare this morning session closed. <laughs>